All right, that's one liter every 48 seconds. What's up, fellas? What we're looking at right here is a piece of refractory cement that has been reinforced with stainless steel fibers and a little bit of metacaline to induce a paseolonic reaction that produces additional silicates, making a more dense, stronger, more heat-resistant refractory material. And this is a new burner design I'm checking out today. So we're going to see what this thing can do. This is a high resolution casting formula. These scratches you see on this plate are scrapes that were in the bottom of the bucket. That's my leftover from when I did the mix to pour this piece. So we're going to pull these forms out, throw it in the oven for a half day, and then we're going to see what we can do with it. So for a while there, I wasn't really too keen on this combustor. I didn't like it very much until I found out its power output capabilities. Anytime I design a new combustion chamber, I like to test it out on propane first because it can tell you so much about the design. And in this particular test, we observed the fact that the combustion chamber is too big for the nozzle assembly by about a quarter inch on all sides. So we would need a half inch and the width and height removed. You see how the flame is searching for a place to be? It's, it's throttling up and down. Now this isn't detrimental to operation, but it's certainly not optimal. We want those combustion chamber walls to get as hot as possible, and to do that, a little bit of flame impingement goes a long way because the combustion chamber, the hotter it is, the better it's gonna perform. So it's doing okay on propane here. I mean, I can't complain. These are some enormous power outputs. The amount of air we're putting in here is on the order of 18 cubic foot per minute at about 80 PSI's in some cases. So, tremendous amount of air. I decided I did not like the nozzle position. It was pumping too much air, so we scooted it forward to reduce the Venturi effect and kind of bring down Bernini's principle a little bit there. So, we moved it closer. It's not going to pump as much air and act like an ejector so much. And sometimes that increases performance because it keeps a lot of the combustion inside the combustion chamber. Not all scenarios would benefit from that arrangement. If we were stuck inside of the wall of a large furnace, we might benefit from that extra air. Um, it's, it's just a hair too big. I, it's fine, don't get me wrong. It'll run okay, but when I build another one, the length and the width will be a half inch smaller than this. And I don't know that I like the non-cone front end of this thing. The discharge is usually tapered off in my designs and the benefits you speak for themselves. That's full fuel right there. That's all the propane that we can get out of a propane bottle, which is typically, um, I wanna say around 90 kilowatts. So, just checking it out here. We're going to be testing this thing today on some very thick, dirty bus oil, which is just engine oil that come out of a school bus. I've got a large supply of that stuff. It's a very heavy, thick oil, and I don't think it's synthetic oil. It may be, but I don't know for sure. Um, and we're also going to do a test on diesel fuel to get a kind of a full spectrum analysis of this here burner. Some of this could be the result of the lack of a cone at the front. Just to show you how much bigger this one is. It's not much bigger than a proven dimension. But yet, I am seeing a little bit of a, an issue with the way it's burning thus far. Now we're gonna try a liquid fuel. We could get different results out of a liquid fuel. It doesn't have a cone on the front. That could also be altering the flow patterns inside of there. All right, guys, let's go for a walk. I put this thing down on the ground so you can see the turbulence that this thing kicks off. That fireball you just saw was a result of the grass being dried out from the tremendous amount of hot air blasting in that direction, and then it catches on fire. So it, it does that. I just wanted you to see the huge amount of thrust coming off of this thing. If you put it on a boat, it would move a little bit. Not, not a lot, but there's some thrust here. And this is the oil. I apologize for the lighting. What we're doing up here is observing the ignition flame, and or the flame holder, as you will. 
This area of the combustion chamber is key to its functionality. Because we are causing a turbulent fireball to rotate towards the back of the burner, it constantly sustains a pilot-like region that keeps the burner lit. Now, if we were to just spray this nozzle into an open back tube without that tiny hole in the back flame wall, it would not burn at all. This is the compressor that we busted out. We're busting out the big guns. We're at about 85 PSI's there at 18 cubic foot per minute. And that's what we got. That's a lot of power right there. The thrust coming off of this thing, you can feel it from 10, 15 feet away. A lot of thrust. So um, here in a second, we're gonna do a power output test to determine what the actual power of this thing is. And I believe we burned one liter in two minutes and 44 seconds. You see here I'm turning the flame or the air up and down to observe the effects of the pilot flame. I don't know what I want to call that thing yet, but there's a fireball that lives in the back of this burner by the flame holder that is responsible for the functionality. Without it, it won't work at all. Here it is on a lower setting. And it does have a nozzle alignment issue right now. The nozzle needs to be aligned, and that is best done while the burner is actually lit so you can observe the effects of the adjustments. But I'm not going to mess with that today. We're just going to leave it as is. We have some cracks on the material, but we're not worried about that at all. This thing is stainless steel reinforced. Do I like what I see? No. I hate it. I'm also seeing not having a reducer on the burner's discharge does seem to diminish performance slightly. So this is more than just a velocity increaser. It actually alters the internal turbulence, allowing more of the flame to hit the walls of the combustion chamber. And the reason that's important is because the combustion chamber itself becomes part of the atomizer when you're working with certain fuels. So having a really hot combustion chamber helps out burn more fuel in the combustion chamber, increasing its performance and thrust. I'm gonna try a diesel test tomorrow. It's too loud to do any more today. This is gonna be our diesel test. I got some dirty diesel. We're gonna try that out. We're gonna Evaluate the flow rates, power output, and air input. See what happens there. Okay, we're ready to roll here. All right, now I set the camera to 60 frames per second, but it's still not doing this flame any justice. It looks like a floppy, lazy flame, but in real time, it is a very crisp, solid edged burn. It, it's That's full air power right there. Um, it just doesn't look the same in real life. It's a much crisper, tighter burn. You can see here we're running at about almost eight cubic foot per minute, and that is I think we're at 130 PSI right here, and my fuel gauge is stuck. I'm not getting any luck out of the fuel gauge there, so we're just kind of messing around with that. I'm showing you guys different flame outputs, and we're getting no action out of that. This thing has tremendous potential. We're talking megawatts, maybe. I believe that was around 750 kilowatts right there, so real close to a megawatt, but not quite. So the gauge is done, it's stuck. There's some goop in there from running old fuel and letting the fuel set in there. So we're gonna do it the old fashioned way and we're just gonna use a graduated fuel tank that I've been using and uh, see what we can do. So I'm gonna set it at a stable setting, which is right around there. And we're just gonna time the fuel tank and see how long it takes. I, I just won't give up on the stupid gauge here. It kind of upsets me. I was going to populate a list of different power outputs for future reference, 
because I love these video archives. Sometimes I go back to them when I'm helping out customers when they want to pick out a product. But um, yeah, so this thing runs amazing on diesel. We're going to set it to about right there and do the math on it. And um, that came out to 75 liters per hour. No, All right, I'm sorry, 75 liter liters per minute. Seconds. Or is it an hour? I gotta double check that. I think it's 75 liters per hour. That's what it was. So we're looking at 750 kilowatts of power there. Um, 2.5 million BTUs is what we just saw. And that's about a thousand horsepower. If you were to consider that fuel consumption going into an engine, that'd be burning about a thousand horsepower. This is about a 2,000. Um, 400 degree flame right here, but inside a combustion chamber, you don't have all that cold air mixing with it. It can reach temperatures as high as 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, and we've tested that in the past. So, the power output on this thing is phenomenal, very powerful. I'm shocked that we got over 200 kilowatts on waste oil. That's an old record. We were holding right around 150 kilowatts. I want to show you the thrust of this. I'm just dangling this stainless steel pipe in front of the flame here to show you the amount of thrust kicking off of that. I don't know that this really tells you anything, but that's not my finger moving that. I'm holding that by a rubber hose at the top, about two inch rubber hose, and it's blasting that rod very powerfully. It's getting late. I gotta shut it down. People are getting home from work. I'm getting awful polite in my old age. I only like to run this stuff during work hours nowadays. So we've got some asymmetrical combustion going on here. You can see there we're black. Over here we're white. So we're going to be examining that. That's where a large current of air is traveling in there. Just the slightest asymmetry in the nozzle configuration. And those effects are exacerbated. Okay, so we've got a couple of asymmetric loading cracks. Basically, we're heating the inside up way faster than the outside. So that's causing an expansion difference. And we're getting a crack as a result. Seems to be holding up okay. This thing is full of stainless steel fibers. And this particular refractory has some metacaline mixed in with it. Because I've heard... It has superior effects on the concrete. It creates hyozoles or whatever it's called. I'll we'll have to look that up. Um, I think that's what some of the shiny stuff that we're seeing here is. It creates another type of refractory material by using up some of the leftover silica and stuff like that, I believe. I'll we'll have to double check that. But I'm not too worried about the cracks because this thing's going to be installed in such a way it's not really going to matter. There is some asymmetrical combustion activity going on there. As I said, just the slightest bit of in alignment. Man, these phones, these phones are utterly terrible at focusing. Look at that, it just went brighter on me. Damn thing. You got a little bit of action going right there. Now, in a furnace environment, the recirculation gases will be on the order of 2,500 degrees. Some of that stuff fell off the wall there. So I'm not too worried about this little bit of asymmetry because this thing is sucking air in on the peripheral edges in this direction, and we could clearly see that by some fuel that was being eddy currented on the walls there. But uh, we'll take it out of the case and have a look. If it'll even come out of that case. It might not come out of this thing. Alright, so it won't come out. Which is fine. That's fine. You can see here by the yellow color of this stainless steel that this area only reached about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, in actual operation, the whole thing will probably end up glowing at least the first two inches of it. So I'm not going to get all concerned about that. Definitely got some cracks going in there, but nothing to worry about. You couldn't pull this thing apart if you tried. 
I've got videos of me trying to break these things. And that stainless steel fiber reinforcement really does a number on this stuff. Um, not to mention, I've added the metacaline to this. So that's what we got.